Hello and welcome back to EHC TV for this feature interview. I'm Emily Carrier. Recently in October, the SGA Senate passed a resolution supporting an activities fee. So on the Allen set today, I have SGA Treasurer Carter Ayler. Carter, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Emily. Now, you came up with the idea of this activities fee last year. Tell me about that. Well, um, I actually, it wasn't my initial idea. Um, the idea had been thrown around for about three years before I even came to school um, with Treasurer uh, Carly Fogelman. Um, but I really wanted to kind of Im implement this uh, this fee after my I guess my junior year um, when the school decided to take away our rollover, which is the funds uh, that, are, that are the unspent funds from spring semester to fall semester. So I felt that by having an activities fee, it would give students more I guess more control over their own budget and um, I guess more of a say in what things they would be doing. So. So what is an activities fee? An activities fee, well this activities fee, the one that is being proposed, would charge each student or each full-time student $100 per semester and, um, and it would go into a separate pot. And today, right now, the money that student government gets, EBE gets, or the Emory Activities Board, and uh, Campus Media gets comes out of the general operating budget. And this activities fee would take it out of the operating budget and would put it into a separate pot, which would enable us to have a rollover from spring to fall semester of 100%. Um, and so we would have more money. Uh, right now we receive $120,000. And um, with this proposal, I guess with, uh, with 900 students, um, we would be receiving a, about 180,000 students. So about a $60,000 increase um, for activities and for campus media. So this would be an a additional $100 fee per semester per student? Yes, ma'am. And what the Senate just passed is a resolution saying they support it. Mm -hmm. Now explain to me the difference in a resolution and a bill. Okay, so this resolution didn't, I guess it didn't specifically state that it would, that it's, that the Senate supported the $100 charge per, per student. Um, it just said that it supported the idea of having an activities fee and it was just basically their opinion. Um, so there's no action that's required on the Senate, it's just saying at this point in time, on this date, on this Senate meeting, this is the, uh, this is the opinion of the Senate. Um, like the bill or a bill would require an action of the Senate, so it's, it's very different. Now talk about our peer schools and activities mm -hmm. right. fees in schools around our area. Well, um, we have, uh, as some of you all might know, um, we have about 12 peer institutions that we kind of look at and I guess we kind of measure in terms of enrollment and um, I guess budgets and stuff like that. And nine out of those 12 schools have an activities fee. Um, and Mary Grace Hankins, who's the work study at the Dean of Students office, ran these numbers and did some research and found that nine out of those 12 have an activities fee. And um, when we looked at the numbers, um, the lowest amount per semester was $100. And so I proposed this to the Senate Budget Committee last semester and this semester. And uh, both committees agreed, along with the Cabinet and along with some members of Executive Council uh, for the college, agreed that this amount would be okay and it's in line with those peer institutions. So what has been some of the senator feedback to this activities fee? Right, so when we discussed this, uh, we had a lengthy, uh, I guess, question and answer session uh, when the resolution was passed and I had a, a huge packet that I walked through with them. And they generally liked the idea. Um, they, they, they actually really liked the idea um, a lot. There were a lot of good questions that came out of that session um, in terms of uh, if I heard any negative feedback. Um, and up until the forum uh, last weekend, or last week I guess, uh, I hadn't heard any negative feedback on it. Um, but the senators seemed to really enjoy the idea and they really focused on the positives of how or what could come out of this activities fee. Um, in terms of, you know, I know for example, Blue Key, or I guess Cardinal Key came to me last week and said, we need $200 extra for our trip to Chicago. And, um, and with these, these addi additional funds, um, groups like Cardinal Key, um, Blue Key, and um, CCF, um, they can go to different places and, and have more money. And also, if we can, you know, work our funds correctly with Emory Activities Board, we can, you know, host a, a big concert every, say, sp you know, spring semester um, out in the football field. Um, and it's important to note that this fee would not go, I guess, if it was passed through Executive Council, um, it would not be fully implemented until next academic year, not, not next semester. Now you talked about a forum with students. Yep. Now I understand the, the turnout was not very good. Right. 
Are you having a follow-up forum? We are. We're having a follow-up forum on November 12th at 7:30 in the BOV, um, and we're going to be talking about, I guess, the I guess the drug policy, kind of restructuring that, and at the end we'll rediscuss the activities fee and uh, get gain some more student input. And that's the whole, I guess, the whole purpose of the activities fee and the whole purpose of the forum and writing letters to the White Topper and you know having this interview right here is to gain student opinions and you know. If any students looking at this uh, this interview and, and would like to talk with me, they can email me directly, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Now, you also mentioned restructuring the drug policy. Mm -hmm. What kind of things are you going to be restructuring? Well, um, I'm not exactly sure um, what Colin and Dill. I know this is more of Aaron Gillespie and uh, Colin's initiative. Mm -hmm. um, I know that they think that the. I'm, I'm pretty sure of what I believe is that they think the rules are too hard on the books, and they want to think about maybe. Um, maybe kind of revisiting those to make them, I guess, a little more lenient uh, for students. Um, but again, you'll have to, I guess, talk with, with Dylan or Colin or Aaron about that. So. So, so if you have more questions about the activities fee or the drug policy changes, be sure to come out to the SGA Forum November 12th. Carter, thank you for being here today. Thank you very much, Emily. Thank you for watching. This has been your EHC TV feature interview. For Carter Aigler, I'm Emily Carrier. And now we'll throw it over to Tweet, Pray, Love with Cole Conley.